picking up where we left off in Ezekiel 28, verse 20. We looked at 19 verses about Tyre. Three chapters about Tyre. We saw one particular character that is found in the scriptures as Satan, Lucifer. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Zion. Now we're going to, we're looking at nations and countries here. That God is going to pronounce judgment upon them. And God is going to name the sins, the iniquities, the troubles, and problems. Prophesy against it. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Zidon, and I will be glorified in the midst of thee. And they shall know that I am the Lord. And there's that, that particular expression that goes through Ezekiel over and over and over. But again, we've said this over. This is not how you want to know that God is God by his judgment. Today you want to know you want to know that I am the Lord today at Calvary. The suffering Messiah. The Passover lamb, the son of God that died for our sins and repenting of your sins. And doing what the Bible says to put your faith and trust of your heart into the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the way you want to know I am the Lord. You don't want to know the Lord when you're being judged. And that goes for a Christianity life too. You know when you mess up as a Christian you do things wrong. You don't want to know what God is. When he brings out his spiritual uh, belt and his rod and starts punishing you as our father as a father will punish his children for doing wrong it's not the time to know I am the Lord and you ought to know that the Lord I am the Lord because you're going to go through many troubles and problems and things in your life you're going to have happiness you're going to have joy you're going to have misery you're going to have pain you're going to have sorrow and all things you ought to know right now today I am the Lord and that will get you by. That will get you through. That will get you to the finish line. That Paul says uh, uh, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he says, I have finished my course. That's knowing that I am the Lord. When I shall have execute judgments in her and shall be sanctified in her, judgments will bring you to know the Lord. Now that's not always going to be, let me say, earthly. There's been many attacks on this country recently. I'm not talking about particular religions. I'm talking about all kinds of There's been all kinds of massacres. There's been all kinds of uh, diseases and, and plagues running through this country. And they're not knowing the Lord. It's supposed to bring you to God. But educators and politicians and whoever amongst the people you know it's El Nemo it's global climate it's gun control whatever it is that turns you away from God those people will be in misery when they find out the judgment I am the Lord I am the one that did that and I did that for you to get right I will send into her pestilence and blood into her streets death and the wounded shall be judged in the midst of her by the sword upon her on every side. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Army troops, army, army occupation all around. Now Zidon is 25 miles north of Tyre on the Mediterranean Sea. Just another note there. So God, he said, well, why does God do all these things? Why does he kill? Why does... It's not God that does it. It's our evil. The reactions from sin. The wages of sin kill these people. It's not God. God just as a judge says, listen, you've done what you've done. Okay, what's the sentence? Death. Oh, we can't, in the United States, we can't put a person to death because it's just cruel. What did the person do that put him to death? Wasn't it cruel to kill someone else? 
You put a guy in an electric chair and, and pull in the switch. That's what God told you to do. Because that guy, according to the rules of the Bible and, and the government, is you don't take someone's life. These people have, have done wicked sins. Sins brings the judgment. God rules the judgment and the sentence is the wages of sin is death. And there shall be no more a prickling briar unto the house of Israel. And that's a prickling, describes itself. Nor any grieving thorn of all that are round about them, that despise them. And they shall know that I am the Lord. There come a day that Zidon will not be a hindrance to Israel anymore. They're, they're not going to, they're not going to trouble them. They're not going to cause them grief. Zion will be gone, and Israel will still be. Thus saith the Lord God, When I shall have gathered the house of Israel from the people, among whom that they are scattered, shall be sanctified in them in the sight of the heathen. They shall they, yeah, then shall they dwell in their land. What land is that? That I have given to my servant Jacob. Go study the book of Genesis. That land grant is given to Abraham. That land grant is given to a son of Abraham, Isaac. That land grant is given to a son of Isaac, Jacob. That land grant is given to the twelve tribes, the twelve sons of Jacob. Ishmael and, Esme, uh, uh, Ishmael and Esau are not part of this land grant. That land today that is occupied by all religions. All media, the United Nuts, will be one day Israel's land, and no one's going to have nothing to say about it because their king, they don't have a ruler today. They have, I think it's a prime minister or whatever they call him. That's not no ruler. That guy is a puppet of the world. But one day when David's throne is set in Jerusalem, Jesus sitting upon it, it will be their land with their king. Of kings, the Lord of Lords. So it don't sound like to me that God's all finished with Israel. Listen, if God was finished with Israel, as some churches and religions teach, we can throw out the Bible right now because Ezekiel twenty-eight twenty-five is wrong. If God has said, "I'm done with you Jews. I, I've had it. Go to hell. I'll bring in the church." I'll let the church bring in the kingdom. Thy kingdom come. We'll come marching. And when we bring the kingdom, then Jesus Christ will show up and smack us on the back and give us all kinds of dander and all kinds of riches and glory because we brought the kingdom in. And the Bible, 28, 25, you can close your Bible, throw them in the garbage because God said he's going to put them in the land. Now they're in the land, but it's not their land. All during the Bush campaign of presidency, they would they had these fences. They would move these fences, move these fences, so you know the PLO would be happy and move their fences a little more, so the PLO would be happy. And then during the other presidential reigns and stuff like that, you know, you know, you got to give up a little of this, you got to give up a little. You can't fire missiles at them while they file 25 missiles into you. And then the great English reign of power and greatness. Well. Jews, go back to your land. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. we got to give a certain piece of land to the land of Jordan. We're so sorry. You wait till God stamps his foot down and says, that's their land. And they shall dwell safely. Is that today? So it's got to be prophecy. Therein. And shall build houses. Okay, they're doing that. They're building houses. But are they dwelling safely? And plant vineyards. Do you see what's going to go on in the millennium? They're going to have peace. They're going to build. And it's going to be vineyards. I don't think those vineyards would be making a uh, hooch. Can you imagine new wine when the curse has been lifted in the Lord Jesus Christ? What that's going to taste like? You like grape juices. I've taken grapes and put them in a the juicer, and that's when they're that fresh. 
We wait to see how fresh they are when under the king, the Lord Jesus Christ, that created the grape. You know, when he made water into wine, they said that was the best drink they had without intoxication. Yea, they shall dwell with confidence. Are they doing it? See, you can say, okay, they're building houses now. And they've, you know, we've got peace. Peace is coming to the world. Under the United Nations, we got peace. And they're planting vineyards, and we're giving money to plant trees and all that other stuff, all that. But are they dwelling with confidence? You go over there, ask Israel today. If you were to die right now, do you know where you're going to go? He has no confidence. He might be sitting outside a cafe and, and a little uh, table and chair with his wife or his, his girlfriend, and next thing you know, be blown off to pieces. That's not confidence. Kids carry AK-7s on their back with their book bags going to school. When I have executed judgments upon all those that despise them round about them, I will curse them that curse thee. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God. Now I believe they shall know. I think that's the Jews he's talking about, what we've just been doing. When God gets rid of all their enemies. Can you imagine, listen, you've, you've got, you, you're kind of weird. David's coming back. Let's just say that. Can you imagine David's walking around Jerusalem like, um, should we go fight the Philistines? And who are the Philistines? Well, they were, you know, Goliath and all that. There are no more Philistines. Jacob, what if I see my brother Esau? Uh, no. There are no more Esauites or Edomites. There are no more enemies of the Jews in the millennium. They're wiped out. They've been judged at the judgment of the nations. They didn't help Israel. They didn't do nothing for them. And they get the judgment to know that God is God is they ended up in the lake of fire into hell. And those nations that do help and do something for them, they get to be in the millennium. Everyone that's in the millennium is one who liked or helped the Jews. There's no Jew haters. You want to be anti-Semitic, you ain't going to be in the millennium. I don't know how anybody could say they're saved a Christian and be anti-Semitic. It don't go. That God, God loves the Jews so much that he's put one particular clause on. You curse them, I curse you. You bless them, I'll bless you. He said that no other nation. Now we've done, we've done 26 verses. We talked about 19 verses of Satan. And we talked about 25 and 26. We talked about God is bringing back one group of people to their one specific piece of land. Why did we talk about 7 eighths of this or 6 eighths of this chapter about Satan and 1 eighth about Israel? Because it's telling you who who's Israel's real enemy is. It's Satan. Satan has been after Israel ever since God called Abraham out. Abraham, I want you to leave your family. I want you to leave your kindred. All right, come on, Lot. All right, Abraham, you're going to have a child. Really, Lord? I believe you. I'm going to have a child. Honey, here, take Hagar. Okay. She's not my wife. She's my sister. She's not my wife. She's my sister, part two. Well, if Abraham really loves you, God, I got people who take their babies and give them to their gods. What about, what about Isaac? Abraham, I want you to take your son to a particular mountain. I want you to do what I'm going to tell you to do. And we can move with Isaac. We can move with Jacob all the time. If you want to see how hard Satan is against Israel, look at the pregnancies. Of the line of Lord Jesus Christ. And see how Satan tried to stop that seed. And we know the end of Satan. 
and we know the end of Israel. To the to Satan, it's the lake of fire. To Israel, it's the promised land. Now remember, a Jew is not looking for heaven. He's looking for that promised land. And Revelation calls it the new earth. That's there. New Jerusalem is the Christian. The new heavens would probably be the Gentiles and anybody else who falls in another dispensation. But that new earth is given to the Jews. So interesting chapters we study.